Well, quite a challenging job there, as is Germany's energy transition. In 2011, Chancellor Merkel announced the country would phase out nuclear energy and by 2050, at least 80% of Germany's electricity should come from renewables. Let's talk a bit about that, Barbara. Pretorius joins us now. She's Deputy Director of Agora Energie Wende, a German think tank. Good to have you with us. And firstly, of course, I would like to know, as we're coming from this report about an offshore wind farm, how efficient are this wind farm in terms of how much do they actually supply energy-wise for us? A lot of energy and increasingly they produce electricity for the German, but not only for the German. If you look at uh, Denmark, for example, they have a third of the electricity generation coming from wind. Mm -hmm. And other countries are also increasingly investing in wind okay. energy, you, wind turbines you, and uh, also solar energy. You, you, you sound very optimistic there with wind energy. Let me just stick with the offshore wind farm because certainly here in Germany uh, it's been a bit controversial for a few years and there has been quite a lot of resistance among the population because for one uh, you can't store the energy harnessed, you need to build a new grid in order to transport the energy from those offshore wind farms all the way across the country down to southern Germany. That costs a lot of money and it doesn't look very nice. How do we go about it? How can this be resolved? It's definitely a problem. It's not as costly as one might expect. It's actually uh, the cheapest way to, to, to cope with the uh, renewables which are uh, fluctuating in their energy supply by nature. Mm. Uh, it's actually um, uh, it's a long way to go, but we are optimistic that these uh, generation, uh, these uh, transportation lines will be built in the end. But they, you have to find the right ways and you have to involve the people to talk about why they, they need to to be built. And, and, and that is being done right now because I can imagine that the rest of the world is really watching Germany right now, yeah. uh, taking the lead in this green energy revolution. And it is also interesting to see that since Germany designed, uh, decided uh, to phase out nuclear power and go green, the amount of coal, the percentage of coal in Germany's energy mix has risen. Now, that can't be quite the right idea, can it? Yeah, it's not so nice. We call it the energy paradoxon. Because on the one side, we see about 30% of electricity now being generated from renewables this year, expectedly. And on the other side, we see that coal is actually increasing, or it has been increasing, um, to, to the detriment of gas turbines or gas uh, power stations, which are, on, uh, which are too expensive at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically, it all comes down to costs. Uh, and that, of course, is, I mean, you need to get industry on board. It has to be right high up on the agenda for politicians, which sometimes you get the feeling uh, climate change and environmental issues are taking a backseat. How can you get these issues on top of the agenda so that people are willing to pay for it? It's apparently on top of the agenda still in many, many states. If you look at investments in power stations worldwide, uh, you see more renewable investment than you see in conventional power plants. So, of course, there is the debate around climate protection targets worldwide on the one side, but on the other side, you have more and more states and countries uh, deciding that they want to increase their share in renewables and for good reasons. Okay, so you are optimistic. Barbara Pretorius, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.